Andre Ward, who joins us via satellite from ringside at Foxwoods. Welcome to the fight game, Andre. Thanks for taking the time. Happy to be here. Thank you, Jim. Andre, you stand to become number one on everyone's favorite mythical list if Canelo can take the measure of Floyd Mayweather in September. So what chance do you give the 22-year-old of pulling that off? It's not going to be easy. Um, I think one thing that Canelo has in his favor is size. But, you know, actually when I've seen the pictures where Canelo and Floyd were face-to-face, -face, uh, Floyd seemed to be right there with him in terms of height. But Canelo is definitely the thicker fighter. He's going to be the heavier fighter. And I think that's really his only chance is to land a big shot. But if you think about it, out of Floyd's last 42 or 43 opponents, whatever it was, that was their only shot. And I, I, I frankly just don't think that Canelo has the experience. It's one thing to have a fan base, but do you have the necessary fights to, to say that you can compete with the best in the world? And I don't know if he's done that to this point. Now that you've spent all the years you've spent working your way up to number two on the list, how deep is the hunger to become number one? Something you lie awake thinking about at night or the last thing on your mind? Well, Jim, I think about it all the time. I mean, I've always gotten into the sport not to be number two, but to be number one. And, I, and I'm blessed, Jim, because, you know, I, I broke through the top ten of, of the pound for pound list with no politics, uh, no extra help from anyone, just the grace of God, man, and hard work. And now, as you mentioned, I'm number two. And, and, and I think that Floyd definitely deserves a number one spot because he's done this longer than me. He's fought, uh, even though I feel like I got a strong uh, resume for my age, Floyd has done it a lot longer and, he, and, he, and he, he deserves that spot. But the number one spot when it's my time is definitely something that I want. You told me you expect to be back in the ring as early as this September. But there have been reports that you've been involved in talks with British promoter Eddie Hearn about traveling to England next spring for a rematch with Carl Frotch. Now, you handily defeated Frotch in Atlantic City a year and a half ago, but this is a big paycheck. Is it true that those talks are underway? Um, I can't say that they have been. I do know that Eddie Hearn, from what I understand, and via the Internet, uh, has reached out to my promoter. Uh, but as it's well publicized, me and my promoter, we have uh, a major issue going on right now. So I don't know what those talks have entailed. Um, I've mentioned before, I don't have to fight Carl Frotch again. The only reason why this fight is even being talked up is because he's you know, made a million and one excuses and, and, and his fans seem to believe him. So that being said, I'm open to the discussion, but they just need to understand that when they come to the negotiating table, who's on the A side of things and who's on the B side. It was reported last week that you filed suit to separate from the man who's been your promoter ever since you turned professional, Dan Goosen. What's behind the move? Well, obviously, you know, Jim, just to respect the process because it's ongoing, there's certain aspects of it, you know, that I can't talk about. But what I can say is this, you know, I simply want uh, my co-promoter, Antonio Lennon, who has been my co-promoter since 2008 when he bought out Square Ring, Roy Jones's company, uh, up until this point. I want Antonio Lennon and my trusted advisor and my manager, who frankly I've known long before I ever met Dan Goosen, to be at the negotiating table uh, and in the rooms, talking to the network and, 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 and helping to negotiate my fights. I mean, you know, this is the way that, that I want these things to be done. And I'm the captain of my ship, and, and I'm the boss of my team. I am the guy that's leading the charge. And as long as everybody understands that and respects that, then we can move forward with the fight in September. But if, uh, if, if we don't have an understanding, which it looks like we don't right now, then we have a major problem. Well, you mentioned Antonio Leonard, you don't mention top rank, and it's been speculated uh, in print that this whole move of getting away from Goosen is about getting into position to fight Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., another potential very large money fight. Is that a goal of yours? Uh, that's a two-part question. I, I'll agree with the latter part, but the former part is, is, is just is flat out wrong, and, and it's really unfortunate because I've seen a lot of uh, writers that I respect run with that story and and without talking to me first and uh, that's a very superficial reason to try to leave a promoter I mean you know I'm a man of my word and as long as my contract is binding I'm gonna adhere to my contract like I always have and people have to understand that litigation uh, you know these types of things lawsuits they cost money and, and that's the wrong reason to try to get out of a contract and, and frankly I think that that fight can be made I don't think that's a fight that Bob is running from uh, people have to understand that that Dan Goosen and my team were uh, they successfully negotiated with Bob to close the public deal. That that deal was that deal was signed, sealed, and delivered before I got hurt. And I, I just think that 
that's a fight with Chavez Jr. that can be made the way things are right now. I think as long as Chavez wants it, I want it. I'm sure HBO wants it. The fans want to see it. And those are the type of major fights, not just a premium network fight, but a major pay-per-view fight that, that I'm in line for. And I think Chavez wants it and everybody involved wants it. Great and useful information, Andre. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jim.